Welcome to the Content 10X Podcast, the show where content creators learn how to harness the power of content repurposing. And now, your host, Amy Woods. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Content 10X Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Woods, and this week I have a guest lined up for you for what I'm sure is going to be a really great interview about a creative way to repurpose content into a book. So I've shared how I did this and then episode 108, Mike Morrison was on talking about how he repurposed content for his book, including repurposing an email challenge, which was really, really interesting. But this week, my guest is David Bain and he's going to talk about a six-step process for repurposing content into his book. Now, David helps marketers to stay up to date with the latest tools, tactics, and technologies through his books, podcasts, and digital services, helping them to cut through all the noise and focus on what actually shifts the needle. Dave is a digital marketing pioneer, podcast host, and producer. He started his first online business back in the year 2000 and his first podcast in 2006. And he's worked with all sorts of big global organizations and brands ever since. And he delivers digital marketing training all over the place with podcast webinars and online summits as well. David, welcome to the show. Hey, Amy, it's great to be on with you. Thank, thanks so much for asking me. Well, that was that was um, quite an intro, but I'm sure I've missed some things as well. What else? What, what did <laughs> I miss from there? <laughs> No, I, I'm really pleased to have you on the show and thank you so much for actually reaching out to me as well. And I am holding a copy of your new book, Marketing Now, an early copy. So I'm very lucky, aren't I, to have this? Well, I'm uh, holding a copy of your book, but it happens to be on the <laughs> Kindle as well. And I've just started reading that. So congratulations on starting your book. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. It's still a bit strange when people <laughs> have the book and, and I see people with it. It's strange in a brilliant way. I really like oh, it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's nuts. I, I have a I published a book a couple of years ago and I'd um, someone just tweeted me a couple of days ago saying, you know, I've learned most about digital marketing from this first book, you know, and, and people shared that book. And it was just a lovely thing to hear from someone that you haven't had a conversation with before, but what you've done has impacted them. I oh, know it's it's so good, isn't it? And it just makes it it's not easy. And I guess we're going to dig into it in a minute, but it's not easy. Um, the whole process of writing and, and getting a book out there. And <laughs> oh, so... Yeah hearing that and and also from people that you don't know you know I, I love it when people I know get in touch with me and let me know that they love the book and you get reviews from people and that's fantastic but when you know it's you know someone on the other side of the world who you've never met before and you haven't really conversed online and then they say I'm holding your book I'm reading it and it's really helping me it's just Brilliant, isn't it? It's just brilliant. <laughs> a related story. I remember one time outside a tube station in London, one person coming up to me, are you David Bain? I, I, I watch your videos on YouTube, love them. And that, that's, it, it's, it's all right to actually get that kind of person to come up to you at an event, say, but uh, in the middle of a big city that uh, you're not necessarily going to bump into anyone is just, just incredible. So, uh, no. yeah. You, you don't <laughs> expect that, do you? It's brilliant. No. <laughs> So, um, so your new book, Marketing Now, um, it's fantastic. And I want, we're going to dig into this. So um, I know that there's a lot of repurposing that went into the book. So mm. firstly, um, tell, tell us about the book. Wow. <laughs> it was a book that was intended to be relatively easy to produce because it was produced as a result of doing about eight hours of live streams and having about 130 odd digital marketers or marketers on there sharing their number one actionable tip. And so what I did from that massive live stream summit is I had a, had everything transcribed and you know, had a look at the transcription and I thought it doesn't really read eloquently. Although people who share tips that were part of the live stream were eloquent in how they shared things, when you actually look at the written wor uh, word versus how you actually say something uh, in audio form, it's not necessarily the same thing. So to be honest with you, I ended up rewriting a lot of the tips with the contributor's um, permission. And um, that makes it obviously read so much better and read like a normal book. So I, I found out that actually the content, um, when you really work at it to make it read like a normal book um, after having it transcribed and producing it as a transcript is probably just as much work as actually writing a book uh, from scratch. 
Oh, yeah. So I guess what the book is, like starting at the start. So it's a book and it is, it's essentially a whole load of different tips and advice from lots of different people all combined together into one useful book, isn't it? So what, what I know you had the live streams and you turned into transcripts and the, the reworking and things like that, but what initially gave you the idea to, I guess, create a book based on, you know, the combination of, of lots and lots of other people's sound bites and ideas and, and tips? So I got serious about podcasting in 2014 when I started Digital Marketing Radio. And um, I recorded over a couple of hundred episodes of that. And I interviewed loads of top marketers for that and made, you know, really incredible, um, great contacts with with, with, with top people who, who are marketers around the world. And probably built up the podcast to something like 20,000 downloads a month. So, you know, not a ridiculously massive number, but still, still a fairly good number. Uh, but I think the key thing that I got from doing that podcast was the relationships that I built. And and I wanted to do an end of year wrap summarizing what was particularly pertinent about marketing at that moment in time and what the listener should really implement within their business moving forward over the next year. So I think back in about 2015 or so, uh, I got um, about 30 marketers at the time to all join me in a live stream. It was about two and a half hours long or so. And um, that was really successful. I had maybe, you know, a thousand plus people watching live. And that that live stream really gave me more uh, motivation to to do something similar at the end of, of every year moving forward. So that ended up turning into my, my end of year live stream extravaganza that <laughs> I kind of put together. And it's, it's, it's become about eight hours now. Wow. And so you thought, okay, so we've got eight hours of lots and lots of different people in, I guess, live stream format coming on and sharing all of their kind of tips and advice and things like that. So why not take this out eight hours of audio goodness and video goodness and turn it into into a book, I guess. So do you, is it the single, are you planning on doing this every year, like turning it into a book now each year or is this well, more a... I could do that. Mm -hmm. um, it um, it took me, you know, a, a great deal of time and effort to to produce the book and and, and do it to the standard that I wanted to get it to. Um, so I'm not at the stage where at the end of this year I'm going to bring people together and do another set of different actual tips because I mean, firstly, because it, it takes so much effort to do, and secondly, because um, of all the tips that I've actually pulled together for this particular book, I've made sure that they're all um, not necessarily time sensitive. They're all good long term marketing tips that will work in your business now. You know, of course, to a certain degree or uh, degree, they're technology focused, but none of them you know, have to be done this month. All of them revolve around good term practice. So I think the short answer to your question is um, at the end of this year, what I'm actually going to be doing is doing a massive eight hour lunch, uh, live launch, uh, launch stream. You don't do a launch stream, you do a live stream <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 to launch the book. And um, so the book's going to be launched on December the 10th. And as part of the, the book launch, I'm doing a live stream, um, which will have maybe about 30 marketers on there, including your good self, Amy. <laughs> I will think, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the, we'll have top marketers reviewing the book but also contributing to, to workshops. So um, we'll have them look into specific businesses and domains and um, um, provide actionable tips for real businesses that people can actually implement straight away from the, the content in the book. Yeah, that, that sounds great. And so with the, with the book, um, when you were doing the last live stream, did you know that you were going to transcribe and then, you know, collate, rewrite and, and ultimately publish a book in terms of uh, something that I always say um, is that repurposing where possible uh, shouldn't actually be an afterthought, but should mm. be planned in advance. And I'm just wondering, you know, did you plan, because at your book, you have technical success, creative success, promotional success, and there's there's 12 different chapters. Um, obviously, you've collated really specific um, points that people have made into the right chapter. Had you planned these chapters out in order to extract what you needed to get the book that you wanted to publish? Sure. Uh, great question. Um, to a certain degree, it was planned. 
Originally, the book was going to be called Digital Marketing in 2019. The, the previous one was called Digital Marketing in 2017. What I found with that is the previous one is it sold very well for the for the for the year that it was perceived to be valid, i.e., 2017. Um, but then sales, you know, completely fell off a cliff. Um, so reconsidering the name of the book uh, based upon the tips that were shared. Um, the, the, the tips weren't, as I said before, that time sens sensitive and it's important for people not to perceive the, the information as not being relevant as you go into 2020 and 2021. So all I did um, in terms of um, kind of preparation was think, yes, I do want to produce it as a book. Um, I knew from previous live streams that Hosting a, an eight-hour live stream would produce approximately 60,000 words, which would be a decent length to, to have as a book. But in terms of the, the chapters and, and sections that you talked about there, I didn't plan that um, beforehand at all. All I did was um, I used um, a, an online booking system. And I got the different marketers to select a time slot and um, each marketer were, uh, was given just three minutes each um, to share their actionable tip. Um, so I was very specific that um, I wanted people to share an actionable tip that was, um, that, 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 that was relevant, um, but also not, um, not time sensitive. And then each marketer came on and they shared whatever they thought was pertinent um, uh, in terms of what they were working on, uh, what was relevant to their businesses and would be relevant to the audience. So they had complete control over the, over the subject matter of, of the marketing tip. And then I took um, the marketing tips afterwards and I saw which tips had a common theme and I built the chapters and section of the book after um, I received uh, all the, the advice from the marketers. I really loved that approach and I love how you really made the most of that time as well. You know, the fact that you had so many people coming in, but it was it was three minutes to share a tip. Were there some people who you were really keen to be involved in the in the project and ultimately involved in the book, but you couldn't manage to get their time on that day to come into the live stream? Yeah, I mean, there, there were there were a few people like that. I mean, for for instance, I've uh, I think most people that w that um, kind of wanted to be involved were were involved, or I I had wanted to be involved. Um, there were a couple of people that I've interviewed in the past that that didn't love the format. I mean, for instance, at Rand Fishkin, um, the founder of Moz, you know, I've interviewed him in the past and, you know, he, he'd be comfortable enough um, being on an, a, another show that I was doing in the future, but he, he doesn't particularly like the format of a three minute tip. Um, and, and neither does um, Seth Godin. So I reached out to him. You know, I've never interviewed him before, but I managed to get um, a bit of a response. Um, from what I understand, he doesn't like um, really appe appealing, appe appearing on uh, live shows. Um, he, he, he wants to generally uh, appear on kind of pre-recorded podcasts that, that give him an opportunity to appear for maybe 20 minutes or half an hour or something like that. So there are people that, that have, you know, a, a certain constraint, you know, based upon w w what they want to do. But but by and large, I'm I'm really happy with the group of people that I got got on, you know, I, I, getting on people like Marcus Sheridan. But it's 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 really difficult to to name people because different people will appeal to um, you know uh, different people in the audience. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And something that I, I thought was quite an interesting question to ask you is that what did you have situations where um, you're collating these tips from all these different people and, and different people have, you know, different schools of thought on approaches and there's not necessarily right or wrong. It's just a different school of thought. Did mm. you did, do you have any did you have any situations where you were thinking, OK, I'm putting out a book, um, but I have a bit of, you know, some conflicts here because uh, so-and-so has actually said this on page something and so-and-so said that that's a load of rubbish on page something else. Did you have anything like that? or Because not everyone's going to be saying the same, singing from the same hymn sheet, I suppose. I, I think generally marketers, you know, 
aren't going to, you know, or, or senior marketers who you know are very experienced, aren't going to be giving out wrong information. They'll, they'll have a different perspective on things. They'll use information differently. Um, you know, for instance, if if we're talking about um, some very specific aspect of of SEO, um, maybe voice search, looking at featured snippets or something like that. Um, pe- some people might have a creative perspective on that. Um, other people might talk about you know. Um, very technical aspects of it and how to set it up. Um, so for those different examples, I may have them in different sections of the book, but I'll possibly um, refer people to uh, the, the other tip in the other section of the book so that they can link them up afterwards. Like you did at the beginning of the show, I loved how you talked about you know another episode of this podcast um, that was related to what we're going to talk about. Um, I think that's a great way to keep people on your site within your brand, you know, experiencing your content. Yeah, I know it is, isn't it? Just directing and, you know, if you like this, then head over here and you'll like some more kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I wondered if um, you had any difficult uh, what, uh, author decisions, like had to chief journalist decision because I'm making this completely up, but because Teresa Heath Waring said that you should do this, and then Dan's tip was actually that you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I, I think, but, I think, you know, yeah. no, generally, I, I didn't have any examples no. of of content that um, you know, would be wrong or people who are at absolute conflict with with other people giving you advice. I, I think the biggest challenge that you tend to have on these kind of massive live streams are, um, you know, a maybe technical, so you get people joining with the wrong microphone or you can't hear them properly. You get people whose uh, native language isn't perhaps English. And it's, it's, it's a little bit more challenging to um, determine exactly w- w- what's being said, but obviously that's fixed with with transcription and then, um, you know, rewriting things. Um, a, a, another challenge can be perhaps some people um, giving multiple tips or other people being a little bit too promotional in what they share. Um, so they might talk about their own business a little bit too much. You know, I'm comfortable um, cutting things out and then saying to them, you know, that th- this is what's um, going to make it to the final book. And you know, certainly if um, if you're a podcaster listening and um, or you're producing content, so don't be afraid to say to your guests, you know, I, I can't do this or we, we can't proceed. We can't use this. I, I remember for years or for, for a long time on my podcast, I found it difficult to say no to people. If, for instance, the the sound quality was bad, you know, some people would would join in and I would try and make the recording, you know, thinking that, um, you know, I, I had to try and do everything. But the the production is for your audience. So if, you know, whatever you're producing isn't um, of decent enough quality, then just say to your guest, I'm sorry, you know, it's the internet connection's not right. The microphone is, isn't correct. We need to sort this. Otherwise, you know, we, we can't proceed uh, at the moment. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I've had that situation as well. And you're right, it's it's your show, isn't it? And you have standards to uphold. And um, if it's looking like it's going to be against those, you've got to say you do something about it, haven't you, basically? Definitely. And it, but yeah. it's very British not to do that. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, I know. Um, well, I, I guess your book, um, the style of it, it's it reminds me a little bit of um, like the Tim Ferriss um, Tools of Titans. Um, have you read Have you read those books? Where... I, I've read the 4-Hour Workweek, but I haven't read that specific no, one. It, it... I, in fact, I, I listened to the podcast series that he did to create that book. Oh, did you? Um, I mean, I, I actually, a friend of mine lent it to me and I haven't, it's one of those where you, you know, you don't read cover to cover, but he's collated some of the best, um, you know, interviews and the, he's done so many interviews in the fairly long form, aren't they? So it's probably based on hundreds, if not, I guess, thousands of, of interview hours. Read it cover to cover, mm. dear listener. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I, don't, I just mean his, his book is I very know, much yeah. designed, yeah, for, um, hmm, okay, I'll look at the write upon when he spoke to Tony Robbins and then the next time you pick it up, you flick through and look at when he spoke to Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that. So it's it's one of those where pick and choose what, what you um, want to learn about that day and then, you know, it's not a 
and it's not like a, um, a novel, I suppose, is what I say, which I guess I say is the same with my book. Um, it's it's not to be read cover to cover. It's to be read as and when you want to learn about yeah, how to no, repurpose that, that or this. Mm. That, that's certainly a way to do it. I, I interviewed uh, Chad White. Um, he's the uh, author of a book called Email Marketing Rules. And, you know, it's a massive book. It's probably nearly 500 pages. And there's so much technical information in there as well. And I said to him, like, it's it's like um, a reference uh, Bible almost. You'd um, wait until you had a particular challenge or a particular topic. You'd look up that particular topic and go straight to that that, yeah. that point. Yeah. Um, so some books are certainly like that. Uh, what well, I really like with what you've done um, that you can see with something like I think Tim Ferriss has done it a few times now, and I guess it's a bit like the Gary V book, Ask Gary V book as well, where that's um, taking loads and loads and loads of questions that have come in on his Ask, Ask Gary V show and combining that into a book. So, mm. um, but, but I love what you've done because that would be based on hundreds of Ask Gary V shows in the, I can't even imagine how many hundreds of podcasts the Tim Ferriss book is because it's so big. Whereas you managed to do this based on a, you know, not hundreds and hundreds of, of hours and, and loads of days and over a year, but you managed to do this from one really, really well organized live stream where people were really well briefed. They knew what they were com coming in for. They prepared. They were going to be concise and to the point, provide really good tips. And then you get everything from that, which I think is brilliant because, you know, it, and I'm not saying that then the process afterwards would be as simple or straightforward because it clearly, you know, it's not, is it? I know you said there's loads of steps because then you were breaking everything down, you were transcribing, you were rewriting, you've got to work out what goes into what chapter. I guess you had to work out what the chapters were in the sections and things like that. So mm. so how, how much time did it take you from, um, you know, getting all the audio, I guess, to begin with, and then um, holding the book in your hand? <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, probably <laughs> something like nine months or so. I, I, yeah. I, I, I could have done it faster, but um, I, I guess I was still developing the process a little bit. And, you know, it took me a while to really get the content right as well. And I wasn't doing this full time. You know, I, I you know, do a few other projects as well. You know, I've, I do podcast production services. I host shows for other people as well. So I, I can't just focus all of my time on doing this. I reckon if I did that, then I could probably get it done in a couple of months or something like that. Yeah, because you had you had so much you know, rich content already. It was a case of all the other, the, piling it together and turning it into something that would be great for people. And uh, as you know, and, and I know, even when you've got that final manuscript, um, there's a lot more than involved in getting it from a manuscript oh, yeah. too, <laughs> which, you know, was a massive learning experience for me. And that took a lot, a lot of time. And even though my book is actually out now, there's still a huge to-do list that I want to do with expanding publication far beyond Amazon and um, all the different places that eBooks can be aside from Audible. And mm. um, there's, there's a huge list that I've got of, of things that I want to do. So it's, it's out, but, but I kind of feel like I've only really skimmed the surface of fully, fully, fully getting it out because there's more to do. <laughs> I, I want to record an audiobook as well, and hopefully I'll get that done over the next few weeks. But well, I guess we'll see. I, I think the thing is also, once you do it yourself, then you can look back and you can develop a better process. And hopefully if you do it again in the future, you can outsource more of the production of it and you know specifically what you want done at a specific moment in time. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I've done the, an audio book and that's going to be out in the, at the end of November. And mm -hmm. um, I can tell you, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> as we're both podcasters. We're used to speaking into microphones and we, we, you know, we're used to doing all of that. But wow, that, that, was, um, that was hard going. Um, yeah. Hours and hours and hours. And keeping the, inf well, I, I hope to get good reviews on it because I tried really hard to keep the enthusiastic I know. You know, levels up, even though when you've been in a, podcasting studio for, um, you know, you, you get into the fifth hour or something and it's the fourth time you've been there and things like that. <laughs> I, I was talking to um, Chris Ducker about that because mm. he, he was recording his audio book and he was telling me that, that, that he did it over two days and um, he, he was talking to the engineer and the engineer was saying, wow, how do you actually do that? Because most people, maybe, uh, as you said, the enthusiasm, most people's enthusiasm drop you know, drops off a little bit over time and, and they have to compress the audio towards the end and um, it, it's it's harder to actually get those levels right throughout. But Chris managed to keep those levels right throughout and that's really uh, a sign of a professional audio producer. 
Oh yeah, it's really hard. I actually found that my brain wasn't really listening to what, well, my brain wasn't taking in what I was saying. So I was starting to really emphasize the wrong words <laughs> and then I'd start again. Uh, you know, I'd just be saying, yeah. you know, like it's it's really important too. And it's like, why did I emphasize too? That wasn't the word yeah, yeah, to, yeah. really was the word that I should have emphasized. So I found, I found then, okay, go for a walk, go for, you know, a nice walk in the fresh air, come back, start again on that. Um, um, that happened a few times. But anyway, I think it's going to be really, it's so going to be worth it having um, the different formats, paperback, audio book and e- uh, Kindle version. It's so important, isn't it? Because uh, people do love to have the option. So it's presented to them. So I all I saw the whole thing as being really worthwhile, but it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if if, if mm. you'd known how hard it would be, you might not have even done it. But looking back, you know, you, you, you're glad that you did do the work. Oh, I am. Yeah, I'm really pleased. And it was Chris Ducker who insisted you've got to do it in your own voice. Don't hire anyone because you're a podcaster. Your audience are used to your voice and so you've got to do it in your own voice. So he was very insistent. So um, I just decided to, to, to follow his advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to, to, to wrap up, um, it's been so great speaking to you and it's such an interesting approach to, to writing and getting a book out there. Um, I'm just thinking anybody who's listening that is massively inspired now and they're thinking, well, you know, I could do something similar for my my industry, my my niche would love this. Um, what would you give as your kind of one tip for planning out to do some kind of similar approach to you with this? Um it's, it's, it's difficult to challenge to to channel mm-hmm. it down into just the mm-hmm. one tip. Um, I, I would say don't run before you can walk. Uh, i.e. Um, try to master audio first of all produce an audio podcast to begin with, you move into pre-recorded video. After that, do live streaming and incorporate audience interaction, then move into live summits, and then you can produce a book from that if you're looking to follow a similar kind of process. So so that's the, the number one tip. Don't try and do too much too soon. People who are consumers are consuming the BBC's content, Netflix, you know, other incredible content on their smartphones nowadays, and they are your true competitors. You know, these media publishers, BBC and Netflix, are actually your competitors nowadays because they're competing for your consumer's time. So your competitors aren't who necessarily who um, you think they are. Um, so the key is to produce decent quality content, um, as well as the uh, quantity, decent quality content. Because unless your audio uh, quality is decent, um, you're never going to get people watching your video, watching your live stream, and then consuming your content afterwards. So uh, uh, focus on quality content in in multiple ways. And I'm sorry if that's not um, really one point, but, um, you know, the one point, the one answer is... um, don't run before you walk. Yeah, no, that's really good. Thank you, David. That's a great tip. <laughs> so where can people go to, um, well, you know, where do you want people to go to find out more about you and connect with you? Great. Well, the, the landing page is uh, marketingnowbook.com. Um, I'm doing the the launch live stream on the 10th of December. So if this is published before that, go to that. If not, um, go to after the 10th of December 2019. And obviously all the information about the book will be there then. Uh, I just want to say, Amy, thanks again for inviting me on. It's been (laughs) great to have a conversation with you. I'm sure we'll continue um, a conversation over the coming weeks. Yeah, no, thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And it will be out before December. So I'll put the links to everything in the show notes so that people know where to go. And um, yep, thank you. And I'm enjoying your book and I'm looking forward to finishing it as well and part way through. So congratulations. It's really, really good. Ditto. Thanks again. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that discussion. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe if you haven't already and even leave a review. That would be really appreciated as well. Now to let you know, my new book, Content 10X, More Content, Less Time, Maximum Results is now available to purchase. You can get that over on Amazon or if you head to content10x.com forward slash book. I'm getting loads of really great reviews coming in from the book already. So thanks so much to those of you who have already purchased it and left reviews. It really is the ultimate guide to content repurposing and you can discover 
all sorts of tips and tricks for how to repurpose pretty much any type of content in the book. If you're interested in our fully end-to-end content repurposing service, then head on over to content10x.com as well, where you can find out lots about that. And also give me a follow over on social media. I'm at content10x on all of the social media platforms. So again, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode and I'll catch you in the next one.